Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to another video of the Diving Trader. My name is Daniel, and today, guys, we're going to dig deep into looking at Nokia. We're going to look at, is it worth the buy? That's the question. Uh, this is thanks to a question that was uh, commented in one of my uh, previous videos by Fortune Stocks, where he stated, actually, I was thinking of buying Nokia a week ago at $3.90. What, what made you buy it? Do you think they can change the... Uh, challenge the 5G players so they're very good questions and this is the reason for making this video to to help you guys to decide whether you think it's a, a buy or not so let's uh, have a look do you remember this uh, probably all you remember well in fact if you're over the age of 33 34 you will remember this uh, if you're under that age you're probably thinking what's this brick uh, but back in the back in the days this was a great mobile and this is how Nokia, most people of my age uh, probably remember Nokia, uh, playing on the Snake game. In fact, if I had the Snake game on my mobile today, I'd probably still play it. So yeah, so that's a little bit on the uh, how Nokia used to be perceived. There's a lot changed since then, and we'll go right into that. A little bit about Nokia. So mm, this is what they've got on their website. They create a crit the critical networks and technologies to bring together the world's intelligence across business, city, supply chains and societies. With their commitment, commitment to innovation and technology leadership, driven by the award-winning Nokia Bell Labs, we deliver networks at the limits of science across mobile, infrastructure, cloud and enabling technologies. Okay, so the, uh, we're talking about 5G here, guys, uh, mainly 5G. 5G is a uh, a long process. Uh, there's lots of components in that process. And uh, Nokia are actually looking at concentrating on these key components instead of the end-to-end -end process, which is why they've been suffering until to date. Uh, in fact, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next few slides. Adhering to the highest standards of integrity and security, we helped to build the capabilities we need to for a more productive, sustainable and inclusive world. So there we go, it's a little bit about Nokia. Now on the price side, prices have been up and down, up and down, very high, very, very high, big high in 2000. And then again, quite a nice high there in 2008. Okay, And until the date... Uh, we're sitting right down just over below or just below sorry just above rather four dollars uh, as of uh, recording this video so yeah there's been a lot of uh, movement there uh, and the last really for the last seven years pretty much if you have a look there hasn't been hardly any movement there's been a little bit of an up and then it's come down but nothing uh, nothing too big so uh, it's pretty flat line for the last seven years now, the 5G infrastructure market in which Nokia operates seems attractive. According to the research outfit Markets and Markets, it should grow at a compound annual rate of 67% to 47. Billion by 2027. So this is a little bit about 5G. 5G and network specialists has been dealing with significant uh, difficulties over the last few several quarters. As an illustration, uh, Nokia lost a 6.6 .6 billion contract with Verizon Communications in September to Samsung for the supply of 5G equipment. Now uh, this is a big was a big blow, very very big blow, uh, and I'm not actually too sure whether this was a consequence of this uh, that the, uh, the CEO was changed. Uh, I think it was actually, uh, and I think he quit, and then we've got the the new CEO that's come in uh, in place, which we'll talk about uh, later on through the presentation. So yeah, a big big loss, really big loss, uh, so it's really put a lot of a downside on on Nokia uh, since, uh, hence the 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 way the prices are at the moment. Management expects to maintain market share in 4G and 5G mobile access, mostly antennas, at 27% by the end of this year. Okay. A little bit on the financial results. Financial results are not great either. I mean, they're not great, but they're not bad. Uh, it's pretty much flatline as well. Okay. Having said that, there has been a slight increase on um, sales. Okay, net sales, run uh, fifteen percent, I think it was. Um, they have suffered from COVID, uh, uh, like most companies, but especially uh, Nokia did take a big, big hit. So um, it's put them in a financial uh, worse position than they were before. Having said that, they're managing to get recently uh, with the new CEO. There looks like there is some 
positives and this is what we're going to go into talking about now whoops so here we are going back uh ceo pekka lonberg so he came in to power as the ceo in september october time um okay and he's coming with a different strategy uh to be a bit more competitive uh Okay, and what he plans to do is align investments by focus on areas where Nokia can lead and generate profits instead of trying to provide an end to end solution. So, in other words, trying to not to be so greedy, taking the whole process, trying to be good at it all and failing at it. So, this is what Nokia has been trying to do, trying to take it all on, uh, and they haven't been successful. Hence, uh, the, the strategy has changed and it shows, uh, shows the deals that they've been making recently. So, we'll go into that in the next slide. It seems to be uh, it remains to be seen whether Nokia will be able to make up for its delayed 5G investments uh, against such competitors as uh, their peers like Ericsson, uh, Hawaii. Uh, so those are the the big le uh, leaders, okay, uh, as well as Apple as well. So yeah, um, have they missed the boat? Probably yeah, they're probably not the big leader on their 5G. Having said that, they are making a lot of partnerships, and this is a good thing. Uh, and we'll look into that on the next slide. So Nokia supports T-Mobile 5G evolution with a five-year expansion deal. Okay, so this is good. So they extended a long, long-standing partnership. Okay, uh, to expand their national-wide 5G network. Okay. Recently, also, they've partnered with Google, uh, Alphabet's Google Cloud unit, to build 5G core networks, uh, network infrastructure, and allow business customers to offer services such as smart retail and automated manufacturing. Cloud computing units of big, to of, uh, big technology companies such as Microsoft and Amazon are also trying to tie up with their telecom vendors ahead of deployment of 5G infrastructure to corner share in a new business the new technology might enable. While Nokia will bring its 5G expertise, Google Cloud will serve as a platform for launching applications and assist customers building an ecosystem of services. So yes, yeah, so it's quite a good, uh, good little bit of news recently. So it looks like they're starting to get their foot back into the, the uh, into the business, uh, and it looks like this CEO really is actually starting to uh, take some effect of the company, uh, making moving them forward. Uh, so that's about about 5G. So 5G, are they uh, competitive? Uh, no, they're not the leaders, but. Uh, I would imagine with their partnerships, which I haven't mentioned in here, but the likes of Qualcomm uh, for making the 5G chipset chipsets, they have partnerships there. So there, they what they can do. What I'm hoping that will happen is with this, the rise of these other companies, and uh, Nokia will be pulled up with them. Um, so that's what I'm seeing in the near future. So I don't ma imagine seeing a big price uh, rise in the next few years. Uh, having said that, I do imagine that they will start to uh, increase revenue, be successful on the on the on the back end of the other of the companies that they partner with. Having said that, there is something a little bit more far advanced. Okay, and this is 6G. Now 6G is so far advanced that we're probably looking at around about 10 years time. So uh, the the G's the every G is probably around about 10 years for the implementation. So if you imagine 2020, we've uh, just started with 5G. So it's taken to around about 2030 really for 6G to um, come into place. Having said that, 6G uh, is going to be held. Uh, um, by or led by rather Nokia. Okay, so Nokia will lead the European Commission's 6G research in initiative called Project Exa HexX to help lay the foundation for the next generation of wireless and drive this 6G roadmap. Okay, so they will have uh, they will be co coordinating this. They will have their competitors uh, with them. Uh, like Ericsson, who has been uh, signed as technical manager. And of course, they've got their com other company, sister company, Nokia, Nokia Bell Labs, and they've already be been building blocks for 6G. So they've learned their mistake with 5G because they came in really late on 5G, and this is why the big disaster happened. They were not prepared. They were they missed the boat. Uh, having said that, they've learned from that lesson, and now they're looking towards the 6G. So with this new CEO, I'm quite confident that 6G is really uh, they'll be the big market players. 
In the 6G era, we will see applications that will not only connect humans with machines, but also connect humans with the digital world, said Peter Vetter, head of access and devices research at Nokia Bell Labs, in a statement. Such a secure and private connection can be used for preventative health care or even to create a 6G ne network with a sixth sense that intuitively understands our intentions, making our interactions with the physical world more effective and anticipating our needs, thereby improving our productivity. Well, this sounds really futuristic, really futuristic, but uh, it sounds good. So uh, let's hope uh, that this will be something for the future. So ha talking about the future and looking forward to the future, uh, the next... Uh, date to put in your calendars on the 4th of February uh, 2021, so just in about three weeks' time, and they'll be publishing the last quarter of 2020 and the full year of 2020. Uh, I'm hoping and I'm assuming that there will be uh, uh, better numbers in the third quarter, obviously, due to the, the due to uh, coronavirus so i think the fourth quarter they're going to be slightly better and this will be good because this will really um sort of kick start the company uh, back towards the way they need to be going also uh nokia's transformation will span over several years and management will provide more details in the long term with their market uh, capital markets day on actually on uh, march the 18th so there's two dates to be looking out for these could be two vital dates uh, that could change uh, nokia the way they're going forward and let's hope uh, that the, this is going to be um, positive for the future uh, i haven't got a large um, part of my portfolio on this i do have confidence and uh, i think this is going to be a silent one uh, this is a silent killer uh, we're looking at this, the share price at the moment, and I think this could be up towards around about uh, $15 probably within the next uh, two or three years. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope I've helped you decide uh, what you think, uh, whether you think it's a buy or not. I'm not in any way uh, telling you or not giving you any financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just giving you my market research and my opinions on this. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, give me a, a like. And if you haven't seen any of my videos and you would like to see some more of my videos, well, just hit on the subscribe button and, and uh, look out for more videos. Thank you for this day, guys, and I uh, hope to speak to you soon.